Hey everyone, welcome to the Run Better Now show. My name is Nick Artigo. I am a health coach specializing in biohacking for runners. I love to blend modern technology with the ancient wisdom of yoga to help runners kick ass in life. So today on this show, we're going to go over a blog post. I'm going to read it and expand on it. It was a, I wrote it a while back. It was on how to become a fat burning runner. So we're going to talk about why fat is a superior fuel for endurance athletes. Number two, we're going to talk about the new scientific discoveries that allow you to burn more fat during exercise. And three, how to shift your metabolic engines to burn more fat and go longer and faster with less carb refueling and gastric upset, less stomach upset. So why fat? What makes fat so great as a fuel for an endurance athlete? The fact that fat is a better fuel for endurance athletes is not questioned. Burning more fat and less, less carbohydrates at any given intensity is one of the primary adaptations to training that allow trained individuals to outperform their untrained counterparts. Exercise Physiology 101. Get a group of trained people, untrained people, aerobically. The group that is trained will be burning more fat at any given intensity. That's one of the adaptations. That's why you start performing better when you train. Here are the reasons why fat is better than carbohydrates as a fuel source for endurance athletes. Higher efficiency is number one. So fat provides nine units of energy calories per gram. Carbohydrates provide four units of energy or calories per gram. If we use a vehicle analogy, then we can really see the implications of this fact. Imagine you're about to take a long drive across country, across the country. You happen to be carrying illegal contraband, raw goat's milk. I'm serious. It's illegal to transport raw dairy across state lines. Serious. I didn't make that up. Therefore, it's important to minimize your fuel stops and complete your drive as quickly as possible. This will give you less likelihood of being noticed or stopped by the police. Your car, unlike most cars, has two main fuel options. Fuel A provides 90 miles per gallon. Fuel B provides your car with 40 miles per gallon. Which do you choose? If you choose fuel A, 90 miles per gallon, then you choose fat. That's the ratio, 9 to 4, 90 to 40 miles per gallon, if we use the vehicle analogy. Fat is cleaner burning. Both fats and carbohydrates require oxygen to burn and provide energy for your body. Fat produces less waste product, carbon dioxide, for each unit of oxygen used, and also uses less oxygen per unit of energy that it gives you. Burning fat produces 70% as much carbon dioxide per unit of oxygen consumed when compared to burning carbs. This is why exercise physiologists can determine how much fat and carbs you are burning by measuring the amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the air you breathe. It's called RQ, or respiratory quotient. Exercise physiology 101. Hook someone up to oxygen mask, a gas mask that's measuring oxygen going in and carbon dioxide coming out and oxygen coming out at any given workload, resting or during exercise. If it's purely fat being burned, there's a 0.7 to 1 ratio of carbon dioxide to oxygen. If it's purely carbohydrates, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. And depending on where you are on that continuum, mathematically, you can figure out how much fat you're burning. So taking our automobile analogy a step further, imagine for your cross-country trip that you have two fuel options. Fuel A provides only 70% of the main waste product that fuel B generates. Also, imagine that elimination of this carbon dioxide is a major stressor on your car's exhaust system, and it can sometimes putter to a stop or slow down considerably 
when the waste product reaches a high level, carbon dioxide, this corresponds to getting out of breath, which is as much a product of excess carbon dioxide as inadequate oxygen. Which fuel do you choose? Will you choose fuel A or fuel B? If you choose fuel A, the fuel that has less waste product, less carbon dioxide, less exhaust, then you're choosing fat. Number three, fat stores are virtually unlimited source of energy. Fat can be stored in high amounts in your body and has lots of energy per pound. Even a very lean person will have at least 10 pounds of body fat. This amount of fat can provide 35,000 calories to fuel exercise. Your body can store carbohydrates for later use in the muscles and liver. However, the capacity for storage is very limited. A highly trained athlete can store maybe 500 grams, 1.1 pounds of carbohydrates in the form of glycogen. That's about 2,000 calor calories. So with our analogy of the car, imagine that your tank can hold 35 gallons of fuel A and only two gallons of fuel B. Which would you choose for your long car ride across the country? If you choose fuel A, you choose fat. So in this analogy, your body is a car. Fuel A, fat, gives you more than twice the miles per gallon, 30% less of the waste byproducts that stress your exhaust system, and more than 15 times the fuel tank capacity as fuel B. Maybe a better question is, why would anyone want to burn carbs? Well, there is one advantage of carbohydrates. They provide fuel for higher power output. They burn faster and can provide fuel in situations where fat burning may be too slow, such as faster running or steep inclines. With our cross-country goat's milk smuggling analogy, imagine fuel A can take you as high as 80 miles per hour. Fuel B can take you about 180 miles per hour, but you can only burn two gallons before refueling. If your goat's milk smuggling operation is discovered by authorities, you have to outrun the police which fuel do you want to burn? Fuel B, you want that high power output carbs. So ideally, you're operating as much as possible burning fat and you have some carbs on hand just in case you gotta turn it up a notch and go 180 and I'll run the police or run up that hill, pass up your competitors. So how to burn fat while running? The most potent way to enhance your body's burning of fat, whether you're sedentary or a world-class athlete, is restricting carbs. It's more potent than any other lifestyle modification, more potent than any drug. Dr. Jeff Bolick, my previous sentence was a quote from Dr. Jeff Bolick, PhD researcher of carbohydrate and fat metabolism, Ohio State University. Many endurance athletes are experimenting with low carbohydrate, high fat diets in an attempt to get their bodies to rely more on fat during exercise. Traditionally, sports nutritionists have recommended a high carbohydrate diet for athletes. There's plenty of ev evidence that a high carbohydrate diet works. In short-term stu short studies where high and low carbohydrate diets have been compared, athletes on the high carbohydrate diet perform better. Presumably, this is due to higher amounts of glycogen, your body's storage form of, high, of carbohydrate. High carbohydrate diets help keep your glycogen stores higher. This gives you more fuel for fast, immediate use. However, some athletes such as Zach Bitter and Timothy Olson have been experimenting with long-term carbohydrate reduction. In theory, this will shift your body's metabolic engines to burn more fat during exercise. In this, if this fat adapted diet works, then you will be able to go faster and farther in a race with less refueling and therefore a lower chance of digestive issues or glycogen depletion like bonking. In order to turn your body into a fat burning machine with enough carbohydrate on board for a strong kick at the end of the race, you could train low and compete high when it comes to carbohydrates, meaning 
you train in a low carbohydrate state, load up on some carbs before and during a race as needed to give you that little kick when you need the high intensity. So does any research support fat adapted running? As of now, there's not much published research to support this approach. One study published in the American College of Sports Medicine Journal in 2010 found that training in a low glycogen state enhances fat burning. But it's important not to mistake absence of evidence for evidence of absence. In order, in other words, long-term, low-carbohydrate, high-fat diets have not been studied much in athletes. However, there is enough evidence to make high-fat, low-carb eating a serious consideration for any endurance athlete. Dr. Jeff Volick is currently conducting, and actually, as of that writing, he was conducting it, but the study is out now and it's been published, conducting research designed to look at the metabolic differences between high-level endurance athletes following a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet, and those following a high-carb diet. This study is called the FASTER study, Fat Adapted Substrate Oxidation in Trained Elite Runners. So far, So far, the results look promising for this approach. Dr. Volick plans to publish the results soon. That was later in 2015, which has already been published. The study looked at two groups of endurance athletes, one group on a long-term low-carbohydrate diet. The other group was on a long-term high-carbohydrate diet. Other than diet, the athletes in the two groups were very similar. The low-carb group had a, an average of about 10% of their calories from carbohydrates and about 70% from fat. The high carbohydrate group had about 60% of their calories from carbohydrates. Each participant was tested for VO2 max. Fat and carbohydrate utilization were measured during this testing. Notice the low carb group used more fat during exercise at every intensity level. So that's what was found. The low carb group used more fat at every intensity. Low carb group averaged more than double the amount of fat burned per minute at peak oxygen consumption. Double the amount of fat burned in the low carb group. Both groups ran on a treadmill for three hours at 65% of their VO2 max for three hours while researchers measured their respiratory quotient. Remember respiratory quotient is how you can measure how much fat versus carbs someone is burning. Here's a comparison of the two groups and how much fat carbohydrates they burned. As a function of time during the three hour test, the lower carbohydrate burning and drastically increased fat burning of the low carb group. So the low carb group had a lot more fat burning than the high carb group. In theory, this would provide strong glycogen sparing effect during an endurance event. So Dr. Peter Atia has also done some extraordinary work in this realm. Although his self-experimentation doesn't prove anything, it does help formulate hypotheses and provide a basis for understanding how his body works. And I will link to Dr. Peter, Peter Atia's website in the show notes and the description here. So my own experiment, I had my own experiment in fat adapted running. I first started experimenting with carb reduction while endurance training after reading Beyond Training by Ben Greenfield. I've always struggled during longer endurance events in getting my nutrition right, whatever that means. If I use the carbohydrate gels and sports drinks as directed, I seem to get diarrhea or have energy crashes. But if I don't take any calories during the race, I bonk. I've had success using the low carbohydrate approach for physique transformation, but I had never given an honest try when pushing the endurance envelope. I figured I would run out of glycogen and bonk too easily. But through research, I learned how the body adapts to carbohydrate restriction by increasing the amount of GLUT4 in the muscle cells. This pulls glucose in from the blood into the muscles where it can be easily stored as glycogen. So in a low carbohydrate state, 
you can actually more efficiently carbohydrate load to increase your glycogen stores. I reasoned that I could go low carbohydrate most of the time and occasionally refill my glycogen stores. For me, low carbohydrate means about 75 to 100 grams per day. I would be relying on fat, stored fat during my endurance efforts. This would allow me to get by on less sugar and carb intake during an event. So far, I have found a large improvement in performance in endurance races while reducing during race caloric intake. In May, I had a personal best in a six hour trail race. A few weeks later, I had a personal best in a CrossFit workout named Murph. I completed it in under 50 minutes wearing a 20 pound vest, 17 minutes faster than two weeks prior. I did this with just a little bit of carb loading, 150 grams on the previous day. So how to get fat adapted. The best approach I've found for getting a fat, getting to a fat adapted state is Ben Greenfield's superhuman food pyramid. I will link to that in the show notes and the description. It is what I've used to become fat adapted for the most part. This approach emphasizes healthy fats, non-starchy vegetables, and doesn't have you eliminating food groups entirely. In addition to keeping tabs on the number of grams of carbohydrates, it has worked great for me. So some tips for getting fat adapted. Reduce carbohydrates gradually. If you've been eating most of your calories as carbohydrates, your body is very reliant on carbohydrates for energy. If you drastically reduce your carbohydrate intake, you will probably feel terrible for a few days. If you're willing to feel crappy for a few days, then go ahead and cut your carbohydrate intake to less than 100 grams per day. If not, then reduce carbohydrate intake to less than 200 grams for your first week, then reduce it to less than 150 grams per day the following week, and 100 grams per day the week after. The fat-adapted athletes in the FASTER study were on 10 to 12% of calories from carbohydrates. For someone eating 3,000 calories a day, that's 75 to 90 grams of carbs per day. This gradual approach should make the transition easier. A less gradual approach will be faster, but more difficult. Lower your expectations initially. That's number two tip there. Um, as you decrease carbohydrates, your performance will go down initially. You may not want to make this transition when you are very close to an upcoming race or event. Give yourself a few months to adapt. Experiment with fasted exercise. In addition to carbohydrate reduction, exercising a fasted state can be a way to shift your body's metabolic engines to fat burning mode. Try a low intensity walk slash run in the morning before eating. If you feel like you need carbs before or during a workout, it's a sure sign that your body is not efficiently burning fat at its highest potential. Remember that your performance will probably suffer at first, but eventually your body will become efficient at tapping into the 35,000 plus calories of energy it's carrying in your fat cells. Number four, carb load strategically. There is a certain exercise intensity where fat cannot be burned. Anything that is anaerobic or an intensity that surpasses your body's ability to provide oxygen to the working muscles will require carbohydrates. So this is why it's good to carb load before a race or, especially, or an especially intense workout, even when you're fat adapted. Remember the fuel tank analogy. You want to have some of the high power fuel on board, carbs. You just don't want to use it for cruising at your cruising speed. So you want to have some carbs on board. You just don't want to be using them up when you're at your sustainable cruising speed. Number five, moderate your protein intake. A big mistake in low carbohydrate eating plans is too much protein. The energy you remove by carb reduction has to be replaced with either fat or protein. Proteins can be used for energy, but the process is inefficient and produces lots of waste products. Fats are a better option. The fat adapted athletes in the faster study were consuming 70% of their calories from fat. This is the only viable way for endurance athletes to reduce carbohydrates. Relying on protein as an energy source is too inefficient metabolically and produces too much waste. This requires water for the kidneys to filter the waste, leading to increased urination and dehydration. Number six, get over your fat phobia. 
As a child of the 80s and 90s, I grew up inundated with anti-fat messages. But with experimentation and further research, I found that fear of eating a high-fat diet is unfounded. In the context of low-carbohydrate intake, saturated fat is not a problem. Don't misunderstand me. It is not healthy to add fat to the standard American diet. That will result in increased health risk. But in the context of low-carbohydrate intake, most studies have found that any cholesterol increases increase is offset by an improvement in triglycerides and LDL to HDL ratios as well as small particle count improvements. A note about ketosis. Low carbohydrate diets can sometimes induce a state of nutritional ketosis while wait so nutritional ketosis. When your body is burning fat rapidly, it does so by breaking down long chain fatty acids into smaller molecules called ketones. Some low carbohydrate eaters will make ketosis the goal. This is a good way to ensure that the body is, bur is burning a large amount of fat, but may not be necessary in order to become fat adapted. Some traditional dietitians and medical professionals warn against the dangers of ketosis and cite some of the pitfalls of diabetic ketoacidosis as the reason for avoiding ketosis. Nutritional ketosis is not the same as ketoacidosis. Nutritional ketosis is not the same thing as diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a medical emergency. Nutritional ketosis is a state that arises from eating very low carbohydrate diets or fasting. It is a benign metabolic state and may even have health benefits. Well, lots of health benefits. Neuroprotective anti-cancer health benefits. It's being studied right now. So that's the ins and outs of becoming a fat burning runner. If you want to get a free report that is a guide to becoming a fat burning runner, go to my website, runbetternow.net. That's runbetternow.net. You can get that free report, how to become a fat burning runner. You can also get um, Yoga for Runners ebook, and I also have a guide, a course, an online course free when you join that Run Better Now VIP club. When you go to my website, runbetternow.net, a free online course to help you improve your running form. You get all of that, go to runbetternow.net. And until next time, I'll see you then. Thank you.